Uh, my name is Petty Yatamsuru and since 2001 I started my journey on the wild camel conservation research work in Mongolia. You know, the wild camel is a very critically endangered species. Only survive in gentle Asian, harsh environmental Gobi Desert. And they have only 500 in China, around 400 in Mongolia. No more than 1,000 in the end of our planet. They drink in the salt water and very few food resources in Gobi area. Very harsh condition, very high in the summer, very low temperature, very cold. and winter time. Wild camel is one of the only wild species in camelid family. Otherwise, other species are already extinct in the world. That's why I'm trying to do some research work on the wild camel. That's a nice piece, but polar pipe is not strong enough. I'm founder and researcher on wild camel since 2007. Then we established the Wild Camel Protection Foundation. It's this NGO based in Mongolia. The Zakhinos Wild Camel Breeding and Research Center located in southwestern Mongolia, which is Gowalta and Bayongur province. It's just near in uh, Alta Mountain, the front of the side Alta Mountain, and very near in Modern Mountain, also which very near in Ajbog Mountain, which is the border with China. We have three workers, three herders at the Zakhinos Wild Camel Breeding Center in Mongolia. Then Mr. Togilton, who is a senior ranger and a senior herder in Camel Breeding Center, and he's working on wild camels since late of 90, 90 around 1997. And he's still working with us at the moment. Also, he teaching in young herders who are taking care of caring in wild camels after him. We have good cooperation with people in the international level, including uh, Nose Safari Park in London and the Prague Zoo people who are support for veterinary work in Mongolia. We are doing lots of work in the breeding center, especially in the winter time, because the, during the mating season, the male camels are usually fighting each other for the try to catch the females. And that's what one of the risks for uh, males to injure it. And we have to control them. And if there is some injury, then we can do some uh, veterinary work to do that. And also in the springtime, when the wild camels give birth time, they also is needed high control for them because the new calf is just first born. It's high risk if they go off the fence, they around there lots of wolf, then we need to save them against the wolf. You know that in the summertime and middle of the May, we take out the old camels into free pasture, free summer grazing area. That time is we have to more control it because you know around this place, a lot of predators, including wolf and lynx, and there's more risks for the young uh, wild camels and young babies too. Then our herders and me them and several days walking them, what they, where they are, and just patrolling them and monitoring them, where they're going, which water point they are using in the summer grazing area. They usually, you know, it takes time to monitor them every day. Since last year, we have to put some a GPS collar for the fog white camels. As you know, the GPS collars give us some occasional and distribution and movement information. That's why we need to monitor the wild cameras and remove the where they are going, what kind of plants they are using and eating, which water point they spend time, you know, this relationship with each other. That's a uh, monitoring work we are doing at the moment. 
the idea of doing some research work for the wild camels and their habitat in the Guilatro BSDT protected area, including some camera trapping research work and placing camera trapping every water points and also we have another research work because we have to try to collect the information. The wild cam, they have any movement about the wild cams into the channel or not. We have to monitor them because the wild camel is one of the member of migratory species. At least is appendix one in CMS convention. You know, wild camel is migratory species, movement, long time movement, and home range is quite big. One individual's home range around 17,000 square kilometers. That's why we're difficult to monitor them by motorbike or by car. That's why the GPS caller will help us collect that nice information about their movement. That is, it could be helpful for our research work. Since 2002, we are using the GPS collar on white captive camels. This collar is based on satellite image, but they have no any drop-off system pull down the collar themselves. That's why we're using this kind of collar on captive white camels. Now we have more than 10 individuals already collared and collected data information from these camels. And now we have no any collared camels in the wild. Only we have four colored animals in the captive animals. Yes, we need a new color. I mean, a new color means standard color for the white camels. Because the white camel is, you know, when we take out the camels from the enclosure, they're moving around the, this area. That's why it's this we need to monitor them remotely. Last, some of some our camels walking around the far away, around the 100 to 200 kilometers, then we almost lost them. GPS caller must be held for the monitoring where they are and where they're going and what kind of habitat and water source they are using. That's a GPS caller is important for us to monitoring our wild camels. In the future, we have to plan to buy more GPS caller and try to put on more camels and do more study for on, on wild camels. White camels in the conservation we call umbrella species. If we can protect the white camels, we also double protect other species. That's why we can protect all this land, including the wildlife and wild animals and land.